Well, today we're going to finish this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch some little lines in here for the threefold. Now, all these lines, what we're doing is we're bringing them all down to where they're going to these point, this point right around here where the braid is, okay? So, first let me... Now your cuts can go into other cuts like that. That's fine. You're not going to be able to get all these individually to go from here to there. Okay, so I've done that. All right, so that's going to give me a starting point. Now with the pencil. We're just going to take a line. Draw one. And bring it down. And we'll take another one. Okay, and now with my V tool, I need the V tool. Okay. Carve them all up into the So we'll just continue doing this all the way down the head, okay? And then we're going to come back with our other little tool here. And we're going to kind of
Clean up these lines here. Doing one side of the head is totally different than from doing the other side, as you probably know. If I could turn this over to Judy, she's left-handed, she'd knock this out in no time at all. Okay, so that's looking good so far. So I'm going to keep doing that. I don't think we need to waste too much time showing you every little thing that I do here. But you can see it's already looking good. So we'll come back after I get this done and we'll move on to uh, starting to burn burn the uh, highlight lines on the thing, okay? The carving's all finished now, so what we're going to do now is we're going to burn some highlights into uh, the wood, the separations between the cloths and the other details, which will make it, when we paint it, make it a lot, lot, lot better. So we're just going to start with our head here. Now, I use a detailer here. People ask me, what do you use? Well, this is what I use. I thought it had a... What is this? This is a coal wood. Barely make it out here. Coal wood detailer. I think you'll find the coal wood's the key... key uh, name when you're looking one of these up. Okay? And it's just a small one. It's not that fancy. I don't, you know, I don't do that much detailing. So I'll turn it on here. And I use a little uh, chisel tip. There's the tip I use. It's just a chisel tip. And it does all I want it to do. Burns a fine line like that. So I'm going to get, get over here. Maybe Judy can spin around here and get next to me to where it shows up a little bit better. And I'll tell you another thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go put my gla other glasses on so I can see up close, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, I got my detailers on and I'll tell you a story. I went and I saw other people using these. and said, well, gee whiz, I better get me some of those. Those probably work pretty good because using my regular glasses here, I get in real, even though they're trifocals, I get in really close, you know, I, my field of vision is really narrow, just a... The bifocal only gives me just a little bit of strip there I can use. So I went down and bought me one of these, and I said, well, this will work pretty good. So I uh, you know, looked through it and said, yeah, it looks pretty good. But man, it's uncomfortable as heck. So I took it off and made this modification. I put it back in the box, and I put it up on my shelf, and I haven't used it since. I went down to... Uh, Dollar General down the road here. Everybody's got a Dollar General down the road. And I went over to the glasses rack and I bought these. These are three powers reading glasses. And I put them on. And I said, whoa, man, I can see this whole area around here where I'm working. Look at this. There's no line up here. There's no line down here. It's just the same all the way around. So these cost me somewhere between three and five dollars. That thing, I can't remember how much I paid for it, but it was quite a bit compared to what those or these cost. So anyway, that's just a hint from me. Go down and buy you a cheap pair of reading glasses. You know, you, I think they come in three powers, and uh, I use these to paint, and I don't use them to carve. 
I probably could, but I don't, because when I carve, I'm, I'm usually, you know, I'm out here somewhere. Well, generally, I'm up here close. But I, I could use them, but I haven't tried these. I don't want to sit here and switch glasses on and off all day. Anyway, try that before you go buy those other things, all right? So anyway, I got my detailer turned on here. And we're tested out here. Always test it out. Don't want to burn too much if I don't have to. Especially around the eyes and hair and stuff. So what I do is here on the hair, I just gently... Actually, I could burn a little stronger on the hair. This is where the black of the hair meets the flesh color of the face, okay? And I just go around and I separate all these areas. And what this does too is it kind of cleans out that fuzz, you know, the, the fuzz that comes when you're carving. Make a little mark right there. Just go on around. And you can see how, how this is separated from that now. When, when you paint, your hair is going to be black, so that black line is not going to show up that much but what's what it's going to do is it's going to keep this black paint because I paint wet the whole thing is wet and if that's not there when I put black on her hair it's going to bleed over onto her face but that burnt line there will stop that from happening all right now things that are delicate like the eyes you want to turn your turn your burner down and basically what you're doing here is you're putting mascara on her. Don't get carried away. You put a little line there and a little line up here. Same on that side there. Just a little line there, down here where the hair meets the wrap. Turn that up again. And it, I'm on about position seven and a half right now, but don't go by that if you use this same kind of burner because they're all different. got that separated. Now here where that epoxy is, you're not going to get much of a line. See how much, it, see a smoke immediately? That's you're burning that glue. You can try to do it, but the epoxy itself will stop the paint from crawling over into another area that you don't want. Okay, all right, so let's set her head aside, take that off. Now we got her body. Now I'm going to turn it up pretty high here.
I've used detail masters, burn masters. One of my good friends in our little carving group died years ago and his wife came down one that day with all his carving things and uh, we helped her out by buying all of them. And that's where I got my little burner over here. And it's, it's served me fine for the last 10 years, probably. I'm gonna have to get rid of those pencil marks I put on there to make things fit. Okay, here's the beading now. This is a beaded strip here. It comes over here too. And you've got her neck piece that comes down here. I don't know where those little brown lines came from. They just seem to show up. Okay, we've outlined that, so we're going to outline the choker. This burning technique was just something that I started doing all oh, years ago and now a lot of people are doing it. But it sure does improve your painting. Or you get a spot like that and you can you can carve that right off of there, it's not going to hurt anything. that choker I just burn the little thing and then bring the pin out and stop it. Turn it around here and go the other way. Okay, for beading. These are beaded areas here, this, especially this around here. So what I do is I just Like that, I'll put a in this area.
Okay, on these raised areas, I like to lay my blade down so I burn that whole edge. It just looks better, and then I don't have to paint it. It just stand out more. Now, if this was a larger figure, I would probably burn around these simulated elk's, elk's teeth. But being as this is so small, uh, the burn mark left from the Dremel tool is plenty for that. So going on down the figure, just let your lines bleed out from where you're You can see, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I don't think there's any reason why I need to burn this whole figure while you watch. I just want to burn these areas so you can see what I'm doing. And again, this is a beaded strip here, so what we're going to do is turn it down a little. I'm trying to be as exact as I can, being as I'm going on 78 years old. And <laughs> my hand's shaky. But I'm, I'm going for texture here more than actual beads, okay? Is that understandable? Like that. And then here,
just go right on around like that the whole thing around here anywhere you've got a color separation We like that. And we're going to put a design, some kind of design, on these blankets. It's just not going to be a solid color. Uh, probably be lines around here, which I will also burn. And that will keep the, uh, keep the paint colors from interfering with each other. Okay, that's enough for now. You can see, see what I'm doing. So once she's all burnt, as you'll see in the next video, she'll be ready to go. She's already looking better. See how those burn lines, even without the colors, make everything stand out a lot more, right? Okay, now if you remember, I'm always talking about how important it is for bases. Well, I've been looking at this figure for what? This is the ninth video. And uh, although so this base looks pretty nice, well, I came up with a new idea. I'm always looking for better ways to, uh, to show my pieces. So I went and I made me a bigger base. This has been stained. This piece of walnut above walnut for making bases because it's dark although there's grain in it as you can see the grain doesn't show up like it does in uh, on a piece of oak which I also use occasionally what you don't want to use you know is pine basswood a soft wood because uh, it's it's hard to get a nice finish like you get with walnut Walnut takes stain great, and uh, it really is a pretty wood. And you're, when you make a nice carving, your carving deserves the best. That's the way I look at it. So anyway, I made a little bigger, bigger piece here. Not that much bigger, just a little bit. And then Judy and I, we travel all over the United States during the summer. We go go out west, especially because I love the old west. And everywhere I go, I'm always picking up rocks. Love picking up rocks. They're really interesting to me. Now this piece, this rock here, is a piece of sandstone from out in western Oklahoma, almost right up against the border with Texas. And it's the at the Washita National Monument out there, where they had a big battle, and I think Black Kettle got killed. And, it was a big battle out there that the Indians lost. Anyway, I saw this rock and I picked it up and it's a pretty rock, beautiful rock. I ground a flat space on here because I'm going to set this rock right there like that. Okay? And I'm going to take my girl and I'm going to put her right there. Like that. Sandstone's easy to work. Turn around here a little bit. Just want her. I don't want her looking straight ahead. I want her looking off, just a little bit off, like that. Now, isn't that impressive? A piece of rock and a piece of walnut and your figure. And now it's really starting to look classy. And once we start getting paint on there, it's really going to look good. And then I'll come up with a title. I've got my little area down here where the brass... Uh, nameplate's going to go. And let's see what else. What else could I do to really make it flashy? Well, she's wearing a blanket, which indicates it's cold. Indians must have been cold a lot, because you see a lot of pictures of them wearing blankets. And they still do that. So I thought what I would do, what I, being as it's 
out western Oklahoma. She's got a blanket on. She's head hugging it close to her body, so she's got a chill. I thought, wouldn't it be great if there was a little snow involved in this scene? We're going to, cre we're basically creating a scene. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put just a real light dusting of snow on the rock, around her shoulders, on her head, not on her face, just on her head, not on any of the details, just real light dusting of, of uh, snow. And that's going to look sharp because the blanket's going to be a dark color, probably dark blue, something like that. The tan of her uh, buckskin dress, the beading, all these colors are just going to be all over the place. And it's going to be an impressive piece, especially to get that feather on there. I think it's going to be a beautiful piece. So, next time, next video, we're going to start so painting. Until then, I'll talk to you later.